What's going on, gardeners? It's Sunday, November 20th, and we have a hard freeze rolling in tonight on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. So I need to protect my sensitive tropical fruit trees from this freeze or they will take damage. That's why on today's video, I'm going to show you how to use old pickle barrels as free heaters to protect your tropical fruit trees from cold for free. Let's get into it. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. The key to be successful growing subtropical fruit trees in areas with chilly winters is to provide a method of protection that adds external heat. That's because trees don't generate heat like human bodies do. So if you just cover them with some kind of cloth all it's going to do is keep the frost off. If it drops below freezing, those cloths will just freeze through because there's no heat under there that you're actually locking in. So for that reason, you need to add an external heat source. And up until this point, my favorite method of adding external heat has been to use incandescent Christmas lights. That's incandescent, not LEDs. LEDs will not work. That's because incandescent lights generate a lot of heat as a byproduct. So one of these strands of 100 mini lights gives off the heat of one 40 watt incandescent bulb, whereas these C9 lights give off 175 watts of warmth. And I've always loved using them because they are UL listed and they are safe to contact foliage in all weather, indoor and outdoor conditions. So they're the perfect things to use as heat sources to contact your foliage outdoors because they are specifically designed for that and will not be a fire hazard like some type of external heater can be. Orange trees, avocado trees, lemon trees, not only surviving, but thriving in ground here in North Carolina in an area previously thought to be impossible to grow such trees due to our cold winters. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is not only possible, but easy with some ingenuity and these amazing cold protection methods that I've been developing over the years and raving about that has helped make the impossible possible. So up until this point, for the majority of these trees' lives, my main method of cold protection has been to put these incandescent Christmas lights on the trees, then cover them up in a breathable plant jacket in order to lock in that warmth at night, but still allow some of the heat from the sun to escape during the day so I don't have to take the plant jackets on and off every single day to vent the trees. And up until this point, it has worked fantastic. However, there is a fatal flaw to this method. And if the wrong confluence of events were to occur, it could result in you losing everything. And that unfortunate confluence of events occurred two winters ago in Texas, where they had a record prolonged Arctic air mass outbreak that dropped the temperatures to, in many cases, record lows. However, it also came paired with an ice storm and other types of frozen precipitation. So this record prolonged Arctic outbreak put record stress on the grid and the frozen precipitation also took out portions of the grid because all that weight from the ice took down power lines. And as a result, anybody that relied on electricity to provide external heat to warm any of their plants lost everything because the grid went down. So that method of cold protection only works if the electricity stays on and you don't have a power outage, which let's face it, sometimes the power outages occur with those Arctic air mass outbreaks and it comes paired with frozen precipitation. So so I needed to develop an external passive way of heating my fruit trees as a backup plan. So if I were to ever lose power in a severe cold outbreak, my trees would still survive. And I solved it. And that method is to use old pickle barrels or any other type of 60 gallon container with a lid on it and then fill it with water and use those big water barrels as a passive heat source that radiates heat back all night long to protect your fruit trees. And these work excellent when you put them right up against the tree and then you cover them in a plant jacket so the plant jacket envelops 
the barrel and the tree, and then that barrel radiates heat all night long to keep your trees warm. And this is a completely free and fully rechargeable system that will never cost you a dime. That's because water has a very high specific heat. Now, specific heat is the measure of thermal capacity that any type of medium can then absorb and then hold. And water is really great at absorbing warmth from the sun and then very slowly radiating that heat back. It dissipates slowly. It holds on to heat for a very long period of time. So these black barrels will heat up with contact from the sun during the day, and then it will hold all that heat until the sun sets and then release it back to the trees at night. So if your power goes down, never fear, you will get about another 10 degrees of cold protection from this radiative source. I have proven this through scientific analysis in the past. This amazing method of cold protection has allowed me to grow citrus in my rear property, which is way too far away from my house to run any type of electricity. On its own, it protected these citrus trees from a 14 degree low last year and an ice storm. So these simple two water barrels right here kept all of the citrus at above 24 degrees when we dropped to 14 degrees out in the open simply by adding a cover in order to lock in this heat. And again, this is a breathable cover. This agricultural fabric, it allows the sunlight to penetrate in. You can leave this for weeks or months on at a time just to check periodically to make sure that you're not fostering any type of aphid infestation or pest infestation by leaving a cover on like this at all times. This method of cold protection has been so successful that I'm doubling down on it. That's why you saw me with those other water barrels earlier in the day. I'm going to add even more barrels to this setup and probably expand my citrus planted in the backyard next spring. Now, many of you may be thinking, that's great that this works so well, but where do I get these pickle barrels from? Well, I'm here to tell you it's easy. Simply go to your local Craigslist and search the term 60 gallon barrels. Chances are you'll have plenty of local options to buy these barrels very cheaply. If this search term doesn't return options, also try the search term pickle barrels. This term will no doubt return a ton of options. And if you're willing to take a drive, in some cases, people are often giving them away for free. So now we move the water barrel into place and we're filling it up with the hose. And this pickle barrel is going to provide supplemental heat to my avocado tree all winter long. Now, while I do have that water barrel in place to heat my trees and keep them warm in the cold of the night, I still want to go ahead and put these incandescent Christmas lights on as well. The reason why we want both systems is for redundancy in case one of them were to fail. In case we get a power outage, I have that backup water barrel. And in case we get so cold that that backup water barrel isn't enough, I can still flick on these incandescent lights to provide an additional layer of warmth. And having that redundancy gives us the best chance of avoiding some type of catastrophe. Now, I know that a few of you are going to ask, what is up with these bricks that are at the bottom of my tree? The reason why I do that is because I wrap the incandescent lights around the base of the trunk because if something horrible were to happen, we have a 100 year event and all of my methods of protection fail, I want to try and insulate above the graft as much as possible. So if I had to cut this tree back to absolutely nothing, the graft remains and it will grow back from this union right here. So I add these bricks here just as a measure to try and insulate uh, the graft union from a potential cold wind. That's the only reason why they're there. Now we have all of the incandescent lights on and boy, doesn't that just look absolutely beautiful. It looks like Christmas. It just warms your heart just looking at it. Now that we have everything in place, we need to cover the plants in order to lock in that heat. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the plant jacket on my avocado to protect it against this freeze that will happen in the upper 20s tonight. I'm not going to bother covering my satsuma. That is no challenge of a temperature at all for that satsuma. And it probably won't be a challenge for my Meyer lemon either. And just like that, my avocado tree, the most cold sensitive tree that I own is covered. Now it's going to get down to be below freezing tonight. And in order to monitor the temperature inside this plant jacket, I have an external thermometer that's wireless that's hooked up to my main weather station. So I'm able to externally monitor the unique temperature under this microclimate. So I will be able to show you a direct comparison of what it's like under here versus what it's like outside in the ambient yard. 
If you're curious about any of the products that I use in this video, from the plant covers, to the lights, to my weather station, to the wireless thermometers that I use to monitor the temperatures of my trees, everything is linked in the video description in my Amazon storefront link. So check out my Amazon storefront for any of those products if you're interested. It's Friday, December 2nd, and we had a near freeze last night, and I want to take this opportunity to show you how these various cold protection methods work in real life. And what you see right here is the dashboard to my ambient weather weather station, which I have linked in my Amazon storefront under the weather station list if you're interested in this model because it works fantastic. Now the first thing you see right here is the outdoor conditions unprotected of the weather station. And last night we got down to 33.6 degrees Fahrenheit, so that is nearly a freeze. Then down here you can see the thermometer that I have embedded underneath the cover of my citrus hedge and that had a 39.2 degree low. So I had a significant advantage from the water barrels alone, the two water barrels that were under cover of my citrus hedge. Then up here you can see my avocado tree which has another wireless sensor embedded underneath the cover and this has the water barrel and the incandescent Christmas lights on and as you can see under that cover it only dropped to 44.8 degrees Fahrenheit so huge advantage when you combine the two methods together. Now, I have exported all the data from my weather station, both the outdoor ambient temperatures, the temperature under the avocado structure, and the citrus hedge that just uses the water barrel and a frost blanket on top of it. And this is what you see right here. The blue line represents the outdoor ambient temperature. The gray line is the citrus hedge using the two water barrels only. And then the orange line is the combined unified method underneath my avocado tree. And I did the math for you right here. What you see is that the citrus hedge using the water barrels only uh, I saw an absolute minimum temperature advantage of 5.6 degrees. So under that citrus hedge, when we hit our absolute minimum and it was the coldest part of the night, I saw a 5.6 degree advantage. Then I isolated the data between sunset and sunrise only, 6P to 7A, because I didn't want the warmth of the sun to mess with the results, and I saw an average temperature advantage of 5.45 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you compare the blue and the gray line right here, you will notice that the water barrels under the citrus hedge provided a really big gap in protection in the very beginning. But then as the night dragged on, you can see the distance between the gray and the blue line narrowing. And that's because progressively throughout the night, the water barrels are losing their heat. They're much warmer in the first half of the night than they are in the second half of the night. So that's why you start to see the protection advantage decrease. Now contrast that to the orange line. You can see that there is a much bigger advantage to the avocado tree setup. And a lot of that's because the avocado tree setup is just a lot smaller. So I have that one water barrel heating a much smaller enclosure and also the radiative protection of the house. So in the beginning, you're seeing a huge advantage to the orange line. Then you'll notice right here, there is a sudden spike in the temperature underneath the avocado hoop structure. This is the exact point that I turned on my incandescent lights. Then you see a major advantage when both the incandescent lights and the water barrel are both active. So at the absolute minimum, I had an 11.2 degree advantage to this setup with an average gain of 11 degrees Fahrenheit and I only isolated the average values between 8.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. because that is exactly when the incandescent lights were active. Both methods have a major temperature advantage and it's clear that when you add the incandescent lights there's an even larger advantage. However, I want you to consider these factors. It didn't even get below freezing. So the warmer the temperature at night, the less of an advantage you're going to see from these protection methods and that's because inside those water barrels that temperature of the water is probably only within the 50 to 60 degree range or so so if you're going to have a night in the 40s that's going to produce very little temperature protection and the colder the night gets the more of a heat advantage you're going to have from the water barrel protection method 
So while I only may see a five and a half degree temperature swing when the nights are in the 30s, that is going to increase when the nights are in the 20s or in the teens, that temperature advantage is going to grow a lot larger. So it's proportional and you get exponential gain because that water temperature is going to make a bigger and bigger difference as the temperature gets colder and colder. So keep that in mind. If the nights are going to be a lot colder, you're going to get an even larger temperature advantage from the water barrel method. The same thing goes with the incandescent lights. These protection methods get exponentially more powerful as the temperatures drop. And that right there is how you can use old pickle barrels as heaters to protect your sensitive fruit trees from cold completely for free, and how you can use incandescent Christmas lights as a safe alternative to add even more warmth and protect your sensitive fruit trees so you can grow plants in ground that you never thought before were possible. So everybody, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the cold protection methods that I used in this video, please ask the questions in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, while you're there, expand the video description and click on my Amazon storefront link to see everything I use in this video as well as everything I use in real life in my garden in general. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Ready, buddy? Come on, buddy. Dale, drop. Dale, drop it. Drop it. Good boy.